Heat treatment of different materials has been constantly altered throughout centuries from blacksmith's art to high-tech science technology nowadays. With the evolution of techniques and improvement of chemical composition of metals, an increasing interest evoked in development of heat treatment techniques and with it influence on the properties of selected material. Heat treating processes can involve the heating or cooling of selected material by cryogenic treatment. Cryogenics comes from two Greek words, cryo, which means very cold, and genics, which means to produce. The aim of cryogenic treatment is to improve properties of the material. In 19th to 20th century first attempts were made to cool down various materials through cryogenics, which were enabled by several key inventions. In 1855, James Harrison had invented practical vapor compression refrigerator for cooling. Then in 1872, James Dewar invented the vacuum flask for cooling material under vacuum. In 1883, Karol Olszewski liquefied oxygen and 10 years later, in 1893, he and James Dewar liquefied hydrogen. Later in 1908 also liquefied helium was produced by Kamerling Onis, and with liquid helium new research options of cryogenic treatments had opened that are used to this day. Space aeroscience was one of the first research fields to notice and document the effects of cold temperatures on modern materials. During the space race of the 20th century, National American Space Agency engineers documented that many of the metal parts of the space aircraft after returning from space were stronger than before leaving the Earth due to exposure to cold vacuum. Since then, the pioneers and researchers in aerospace, medicine, automotive and electronic industries have been searching, improving and analyzing new ideas and methods in the field of cryogenic treatment of materials. The cryogenic treatment of materials is divided into three systematically different temperature systems. First and foremost is the conventional cold treatment, for which the temperature is reduced down to minus 80 C. Conventional cold treatment was common in the past, because it was believed that temperatures down to minus 80 C were adequate to transform most of the retained austenite into martensite in steels. The second type, shallow cryogenic treatment or SCT, occurs from minus 80 C to minus 160 C. For ferrous materials, shallow cryogenic treatment causes transformation of retained austenite into martensite and allows size reduction of carbides and thus increased number of them. The last type is deep cryogenic treatment, which is commonly abbreviated as DCT. In Celsius scale, the deep cryogenic treatment is in some literatures already below minus 150 C, however more commonly below minus 160 C. When ferrous alloys are exposed to DCT, several parameters have to be taken into account. The importance factor of the individual parameters was statically determined with the Taguchi method. The far most important factor is selected soaking temperature of selected media. The most commonly used one for ferrous alloys is 77K. The next parameter is holding time of the material under selected deep cryogenic temperature, which is usually 24 hours or one day for ferrous alloys. Third factor is cooling rate and warming rate, with most commonly used 10K per second, and the last parameter is placement of deep cryogenic treatment. Where the most commonly applied is directly after quenching and before tempering step. DCT samples are usually followed by a single tempering cycle, whereas conventionally treated samples have one to three cycles of tempering. In recent years, more and more research is also conducted with a specific type of DCT described as multistage deep cryogenic treatment or MCT. In this case, the treatment consists of rapid cooling down to DCT temperature and heating up to SCT temperature or even to room temperatures in a cyclic manner with several repetition cycles. For main methods of applications of DCT on ferrous alloys can be found in literature. The first is gradual immersion, where the sample is directly immersed in liquid nitrogen for a predetermined time and then gradually warmed back to room temperature. The second is the heat exchanger, where liquid nitrogen flows through chamber, at which the cooled gas is dispersed by a fan inside the cooling chamber. 
The third option is direct nebulization, where liquid nitrogen is nebulized directly into a chamber and homogeneous, distributed by a fan. The fourth option is a hybrid method, which is actually a combination of first nebulization followed by gradual immersion, in order to provide improved control of the cooling whilst maintaining a high cooling rate. For the different techniques, different cooling media, mostly gases, are used. The common gases used for DCT are presented in the table. Some gases tend to be more preferable compared to others for usage in DCT due to the properties of the selected gas. For example, liquid hydrogen can cause metals to undergo hydrogen embrittlement, which promotes brittleness and induces fracturing of the material. Additionally, hydrogen is considerably harder to store and is very explosive, making it difficult to handle with ease. Another example is helium, which can solidify other gases, such as oxygen, in localized areas, where pressure relief passages occur that lead to dimensional instability of the material. However, in most cases nitrogen is preferred due to its high availability, low cost, inertness, easy handling, and storage. Application of DCT can be found in various industries. In steel industry, for improvement of steel properties. In tool industry for tools, casings, and electronics. In aerospace industry for shuttles, tools, and robotics. In medicine, for improvement of implants. In energy sector or industry, for increased corrosion resistance of pipes for oil and gas. In automotive industry, for body parts, drive trains, suspensions, and other parts of car, motorbike, and trains. Nuclear power sector for improvement of the material used for storage. DCT is becoming nowadays more and more applied also in the musical industry, where brass and plucked string instruments are treated by DCT to improve the acoustic effect. For mining equipment. With all the above DCT has also attracted attention from nanosciences and nanotechnologies as a part of the heat transfer application in nanomaterials, nanofluids, and resolving the agglomeration issue of particles. Furthermore, DCT is also becoming an interesting possibility for applications in 3D printing, microscopy, and laser technology. Increasing demands on the market for materials performance improvement, material life cycle enhancement, cost savings, reduction of material for production and increased fraction of used green energy or technology are causing shifts in science and industry to adapt to these demands. One of the possible solutions is also DCT, which is cost-effective and can be marketed as green technology. As such, it does not have a negative impact on the environment, which is a win-win combination for industry and the environment. Under DCT, several changes occur in metallic materials. The first one is the conversion of retained austenite into martensite. Martensite is important especially when the DCT is applied. It has an exceptional combination of toughness, hardness, and strength. The characteristics of martensite are obtained by homogeneous solid phase transformation of the parent phase austenite and it is known as martensitic transformation and is an adifusional process. The reformation of the lattice occurs by a bane strain, which essentially results in a compression along the z-axis and uniform expansion along the x and y-axis. Martensite transformation is not only present in ferrous alloys, but can be also present in other metals and non-ferrous alloys. DCT induces the transformation of austenite into martensite even up to 600% for some materials. DCT makes more rounded form of the ends of martensitic laths. It refines the matrix and induces orientation of laths, preferentially along 101 and 001 directions. General orientation of the prior austenite grains is preserved through martensitic subdivision of austenite grains with DCT. DCT induces carbon redistribution and size reductions and precipitation of fine submicroscopic carbides. DCT increases the precipitation of carbides in matrix. Makes carbides smaller and more spherically shaped and are more homogeneously distributed. 
The precipitation and evolution of smaller cuboidal carbides during DCT is proposed to evolve from two carbides. DCT has a higher effect on C-enriched steels, decreases residual stresses, improves dimensional stability, increases tool life, and cuts operating costs. DCT has been proven also to improve or change mechanical properties and fatigue of materials, such as hardness, up to 10%, fracture toughness and impact toughness, up to 20%, compressive strength up to 40%, strain hardening exponent, up to 45%, tensile strength up to 20%, and fatigue properties even up to 50%. However, the changes and with these improvements are strongly dependent to the heat treatment parameters, such as austenitization temperature and tempering temperature, as have shown studies. DCT can also improve corrosion resistance of material. DCT increases polarization resistances and improved corrosion resistivity of the material. Nitrogen is incorporated into the material's surface through immersion in liquid nitrogen, which improves the corrosion resistance of material, such as steels. Nitrogen stabilizes the green rust growth through a catalytic reaction, resulting in the formation of magnetite and ammonium. DCT also improves cracking resistance, which is proposed to be induced by the reduced residual tensile stress of the material and more homogeneous distribution of alloying elements. Furthermore, the occurrence of pits is lower for DCT compared to CHT samples. Additionally, DCT samples displayed triple shallower pits compared to CHT samples. Based on the results, it is expected that the combination of DCT and appropriate surface finishing can lead to improvement of corrosion resistance and material lifetime by more than 900%. The EDS mapping of the steel exposed to the salt water additionally confirmed the results the growth of green rust. Graphical representation of pit growth regarding heat-treated state of investigated steels, conventional and deep cryogenic heat treatment. Conventional heat-treated sample pit growth is resulting from direct vertical grain attack within inhomogeneous regions. Whereas, DCT sample pit growth results from intergranular corrosion on defect or impurity portions of the primary austenite grain boundaries. Decrease of corrosion rate by 55 to 65 percent if samples are DCT treated compared to conventionally heat treated samples for tool and bearing steels. TOF SIMS results additionally confirm that the nitrogen acts as a building block for the formation of a thin corrosion buffer layer dubbed as a ghost layer which facilitates the preferential formation of green rust type I. The modification is considered to result from the formation of additional ion species that modify the local environment and ionic exchange between the alloy surface and corrosive medium. In turn, the green rust layer acts as a precursor for the formation of magnetite, which reduces the corrosion propagation due to its high density. As a result, the DCT samples exhibit lower corrosion rates and wear loss, which was also confirmed in more extreme environments that involved elevated temperatures and vibrations. Furthermore, DCT can also improve wear resistance of the material. DCT can improve abrasive and adhesion wear resistance even up to 65% compared to non-DCT treated samples. The reason for this is that DCT promotes precipitation of finer carbides and their more homogeneous distribution, facilitating improvement in toughness as well as hardness. The increased toughness allows for the localized deformation of the softened matrix material due to high contact temperatures, which in turn, allow the displacement of the carbides from the contact surface into deeper parts of the matrix, protecting the matrix from nominal friction forces and wear. In turn, the initial removal of material mostly results from the accommodation of this effect, which is then considerably reduced with the intensified agglomeration of carbides over time. In regards to dynamic impact wear, DCT can improve wear resistance up to 40%, which is attributed to the same mechanism as for sliding wear. And even for galling conditions DCT showed promising improvement of up to 50%. DCT changes microstructure and consequently also magnetic behavior of the material. The graph shows results acquired with MOC magnetometry. 
In addition, also localized stress indentations show different magnetization response. The intensity measurements of magnetism display a clear distinction between the CHT and DCT samples. The magnetization firstly follows a similar behavior for both samples up to about 150 milliteslas, afterwards the magnetization of the DCT sample changes slower compared to the CHT sample, which confirms the effect of DCT on microstructure and resulting magnetic properties. Magneto-optical Kerr effect images at magnetic field of 300 milliteslas reveals more detailed features that originate from the microstructure of the material. The magnetic domains from the Martensitic matrix continuously change their magnetization towards the direction of applied magnetic field, whereas the carbides and retained austenite exhibit no magnetic contrast. As a result, the amplitude of the MOC signal from the regions of the carbides and retained austenite remains constant. The DCT can influence also on the other surface properties such as Roughness, it has been proved that DCT makes even up to 50% smoother surface compared to conventional heat treatment, which can then influence on absorption or adsorption of water or coatings. DCT can even influence on the oxidation dynamic of alloying elements and oxide layer. The oxide layer in DTC samples is even up to 80% thinner compared to conventionally heat-treated samples. In addition to all changes during DCT, the DCT itself also influence on the etching process of the ferrous and non-ferrous alloys. To DCT is related to also extraordinary nanocrystalline plumbum whisker growth from bismuth magnesium plumbum pool due to changes in residual stresses. The influence of this phenomena can be seen in our video related to this. Overall, the studies have showed that effectiveness of DCT is strongly dependent on steel type, chemical composition, heat treatment parameters, temperature of austenitization, temperature of tempering, phase transformation phenomena. With the research, we come to the following conclusions. If you would like to know more, please look at our articles, follow our research and connect with us via email, LinkedIn or ResearchGate.